Because those I, I do love. If you're not a Chess24 Premium member, you can become one. I'm assuming there's currently a voucher code that gets you 40% off with the code Charity Cup. So you can do that. Other than that, we talk about my many problems in life because that's what this show is really all about. That you guys get to hear me whine. So let's see if we have any any challenges already and begin begin the chess action play against pen frank pen frank here we go are you ready sir ma'am bring out the horsey the pawn and I shall oppose that pawn with my own pawn. I know, sounds, sounds daring. We'll play the Queen's Gambit as people used to do before the rise of the London. And Pan Frank is playing the Slav to set the tone for the show, just so you guys know what you're in for. We'll do this. The amazing exchange slot. It's it's more fun than it looks. E6, it's a bit risky because now I can't target this pawn, which is not that easy to defend. Here we'll give a check. Pan Frank, you gotta be careful. I told you. It's great fun, the exchange slot. Now after knight d7, we might have to think some options. Rook c7, knight e5, bishop c7. I can't decide. Bishop c7 is good. Queen e7, take. Queen c8, knight e5. Let's do it. Didn't feel like the most forcing of moves, but it does look good enough. If I might see six, worst case scenario, I can just go bishop d8. Um, and here, after knight c6, we might have to think again, which is going to be unpleasant. Bishop takes, okay, four. Maybe I can be all fancy and go bishop a4. Is it going to work at all, or am I just going to lose all my pieces in the first game? That'd be mildly upsetting. Just mildly. And not sure what this position is. Oh, boy. Um, I'm a chess grandmaster, in case you wondered. I'm a highly qualified chess player. <laughs> and takes, rook takes, bishop d7, queen d7, knight d7. Ah, oh, I'm also out of time. Things are going well. Oh boy. The problem is that after Bishop A4, there's Bishop B4 check, which is somewhat unpleasant, but it is what it is. That's somewhat unpleasant, I mean, that I'm just totally lost here. Pen Frank. How dare you do all these bad things to me? I thought we were, we were friends.
This is the part of the show where I turn very quiet and try to somehow win this horrible mess that I got myself into, but not <laughs> before blundering another bishop. Stop giving checks, sir. How are you guys? Hmm. Want to draw your queen up? Queen g4, checkmate. Mm -hmm. It's early. It's important to set the tone early. Um, thanks for the game, Pen Frank. I think I deserved the victory. You might have had a chance here and there, but overall, I did crush you. Let's be honest with ourselves here. So it's been great fun. Thank you so much for joining. What's happening? How's the how's the chess chess tour going? Is Magnus beating, beating the other chess players? I have a great command of the English language. Chet is surprised to hear me speak English. I used to speak a lot of English. Then it completely disappeared from my life. So you'll have to forgive my, my very, very strong German accent. I still have not mastered the art of using the TH properly. I still greatly struggle with the square H3. I prefer calling it H3. It's easier for me. So that's that's the state of things here. I no longer watch any English language entertainment. It's all in German now. So my my source of words is running a bit dry. Last night I tried, because I knew I had to do the Bantablades, I tried to watch a movie in English. So I watched the the latest Clint Eastwood movie, Cry Macho, where Clint Eastwood very surprisingly plays the, the strong silent type. He's sort of an outlaw cowboy. He's not really an outlaw. He's just a cowboy type who, I don't know what he does. He goes to, to Mexico to pick up some kit for, this sounds wrong already. He's hired to do a job, pick up, pick up a kit in Mexico. And along the way, they run into some not very exciting adventures. Like sometimes the cops think they have drugs, which they don't. Sometimes there are some, I don't even know, there's not much happening, but... The main problem is Clint Eastwood, big fan, but he's 91 years old. It's very, very tough to pull off the strong, quiet cowboy type at 91. Um, and I don't think I'm spoiling anything because I don't think there's anything happening. I could be wrong. I think it's more about the, the reflection, the introspective, is that what it's called? But there was also not a lot of talking. I was hoping to, to pick up some English terms, but the strong silent type, turns out that they don't talk very much. So cry macho, yeah, that's my verdict. Shadow mage, please don't check me. Let me win one game without flagging a queen down, because if I don't, it's gonna it's gonna reflect on my performance. It is true that Gran Torino is a great movie where he was 
already ancient, but first of all, he was a a springy, is that a word? Springy 80-year-old in Gran Torino. And secondly, he was playing the get off my lawn old man that I'm also rapidly adapting for for everyday life. So it felt a bit different than the strong silent type in in cry macho. I don't know, maybe maybe I shouldn't have been on my phone the entire movie. That's sometimes possible source of being distracted, but I didn't I didn't like it that much. Just so you know. I do have a lawn. What is a lawn? I have a I have a small yard, is that what's called? And there's a there's some sort of um table with chairs. Is that is that a lawn? I think I think that defines as lawn. But I don't have the classical, you know, small grassy area in front of house and small grassy area behind house. So I just have a small grassy area um, house house adjacent or a jar to the house. Is a jar a word? I, I'm doing great here because of my great strategic stuff. Pawns weak, um, I will create weaknesses on, on Queenside. Amazing game by yours truly. Um, where were we? A jar. It's slightly left open. Now that's that sounds wrong. Although the construction is slightly open, since this is a true story from my very exciting life. Mm, do I need to pay attention about Bishop G five here? By the way, I should make a. A small disclaimer, by the way, this dis disclaimer sounds wrong. I should mention that with all this fake whining I'm doing about how tough things are for me and in my life, that my thoughts these days obviously are with the victims of the Russian attack on, on Ukraine, and I find it absolutely crushing what's happening there and all this chess and nonsense talking that we do and thank you guys for listening to it for me it's just distracting from the news of i don't even yeah two hundred fifty thousand being trapped in mariupol without water with their homes destroyed so please don't take it the wrong way when i'm talking about the the tough challenges of my my lawn, I think we're all very aware of the the privileges we have in times like these. Anyway, sorry for no, not sorry at all. I just thought it had to be had to be mentioned while I whine about the the big storm in Hamburg destroying my my picket fence. It's true, and my. My yard has become slightly, slightly open for the neighbors to see into. Um, which is, is a rough spot because there is a bit of a passive aggressive war going on with my neighbors here. I, I need to win this passive aggressive war against Shadowmate because I'm down to, hang on, I get extra time? Shadowmate, did you do one of these trick challenges where we get extra seconds per move? How am I gonna flag? Looks like there's time added. No, this is like three, two or some, some weird time control. 
I would guess that's the official feeder time control, but it does feel wrong to me. How can we flag? Where, where was I? Oh, yeah, I was in the passive aggressive battle with my neighbors. So here's the thing. We're sharing, thanks for the game, Shadowmate. Timothy Shadowmate. We are sharing, and how do you call this? Boy, I shouldn't even joke about my English being rusty. We are sharing trash cans with, I believe, 15 other parties. I'm not sure if this is true. Could be eight other parties. Anyway, with some, some neighboring parties. And Germans are rightly so, I would guess rightly so, very big on recycling and separating your trash into. And now I'm going to look not very knowledgeable, but that's because of the language barrier. In German, I'm a big expert on, on recycling. So you separate it into whatever, plastic packages, into, we call it biomüll, which is, yeah. Um, oh boy. This, is, this story is not going to end well for me, but it's just because of the language barrier. And into other stuff. So you have like three categories of trash. And as we know that we're in suburban Germany, we are following the, the rules very carefully. But there has been an incident recently that rocked the community. Someone put their um, plastic and packaging trash into the other trash container. And it was not picked up. That's at least the story. I think the story is someone put a lot of, what do you call this? Wood? There's another container for paper and wood. It gets very confusing. Anyway, someone put a lot, that container was full. So someone put a lot of stuff in front of it and the trash was not picked up. And ever since, all the neighbors are doing intense research on which neighbors put trash into the wrong container to find out who was. There were multiple angry mails with people describing. This is all a true story, but people describing that they would have never imagined that they would have to search their neighbor's trash in order to find out who put that trash in the wrong container. And my thought was, I also would have never imagined that my neighbors would search my trash and everybody else's trash. Because it's a weird, creepy thing to do, but it gets worse. It does get worse because we fell under suspicion due to the fact that diapers were allegedly, I have not seen proof of this, and I do not think this is true, but allegedly diapers were spotted on a different day. This is not the same day of the big trash kit did not get picked up incident, but allegedly diapers were spotted in one of the trash bags in the trash that was once again misplaced. And that makes us suspect because only two other neighbors have kids in diaper age. Now we were informed that we are under suspicion by one particularly attentive neighbor. I correctly, because we actually know, because diapers, it's a bit weird to misplace them. And you know, they can be smelly and so on. So we do know where to put those. <clears throat> but we were informed that we're under suspicion and now it gets worse. Two days ago, I leave my premises 
And there, are, there's this little space we have where we have other parties. We don't have a car, but other parties have their cars there. We have our our collection of bikes, cargo bikes, whatever stuff the kids are using, standing there. And there is this trash bag lying there, which contains what do you call this? I, I should know. Germans, what, what is it in English? Biomüll, like this stuff. Um, yeah, cut fruit and so on. Cut fruit? I really don't speak English. Anyway, there is a bag with organic waste. That's the term I'm looking for. There's a bag with organic waste and it's lying there on our area where the, we have our bikes and so on. So clearly, some neighbor is sending a message. You guys put your organic waste into the wrong trash can, and we know it was you. The thing is, it wasn't us. Now we got into the let's look at trash game and check what's in the back. Very much like Brad Pitt did in Seven, with similarly scary results. For example, there were oranges. We never have oranges in the house. So it was not us. But clearly, we're being suspected. Messages are being sent. I do not know what's next. I'm checking my bed for horse hats on a constant basis. And I don't know how to get out of this. Shall I write an angry email to all the neighbors that they are creeps and that it's incredibly intrusive and weird to leave trash? Um, or shall I go defensive and say, it wasn't us, I can prove it. We hate oranges, and there were oranges in there. I do not have a solution. And, but it tells you something about, about life in suburban Germany. Also, I do have like um, nine seconds, which is not that much. It's, it's more than Magnus Carlsen. It is like one or two seconds. But we did flag P and three. Now, I'm going to need a solution for this pickle. Maybe it is moving. Maybe, because now, I'm. whenever I meet a neighbor, I greet them in my cheerful, life-affirming way that I'm sure you guys can imagine. But now I carefully scan their reaction. I'm like Larry David in Curb Your Enthusiasm. And to see if they behave in a hostile manner towards me. But what, what do you advise? I'm not sure where this is going. Maybe, maybe the only way is that I find, I find the culprit, that I find the trash criminal that once put their trash incorrectly into the wrong container and I hand them over to the authorities. Maybe that's the way to clear my name. Seriously though, this is all incredibly weird, isn't it? Intrusive to like search people's trash, then wrongfully pick out trash, put it, put it on our parking spot, whatever you want to call it. It's very, very creepy. And I'm aware it's just probably just one of the neighboring parties, possibly the one that sent an angry email about the, the trash. But it does creep me out a little bit. And it does make it weirder to interact with the neighbors. It feels like a very German thing to do, but I could be wrong. I guess this could happen in any suburban situation where people are sharing trash cans. Anyway, it does bother me. And I felt that it needs to be addressed in this gigantic forum that is Bantablitz. In Sweden, we leave angry post-it notes. That's not a bad idea. Oh, interesting thought, Elan. Maybe the one whose trash it was is shifting the attention to you. So you mean it's like someone kills somebody in Among Us and then they, they report directly. So you think someone 
that has previously committed trash crimes is trying to frame us by leaving that organic waste on our doorstep. Hmm. Captain Harris saying, people in suburbia are assholes. And I say that as a suburbian. Thing is, most of my neighbors seem nice. It's just, you know, families with, with kids. And I'm sure it's just one or two trash detectives here. But it's so creepy. Neighbors, if you're watching, this is weird. Also, feel free. Maybe that's what I should do. Maybe I should invite all the neighbors into our home, give them a tour so they can inspect how the recycling is being done. They can go through our three separate trash cans. Oh, Queen H4, why don't I take Queen H4? F3? F3 looks wrong, mostly. You can take, or can you check? Let's try to, to be fancy. That always works. So I think I should um, invite all the neighbors for a tour through our three trash cans at home. And then they can ask questions like, where do the used diapers go? Which bag do you put them in? Where do you put those? What about the organic waste? This is a banana. Where does it belong? Stuff like that. I will prepare for that quiz thoroughly, just in case, because I don't want to fall in a suspicion again. But maybe that is, that is the way to do it. Or I could leave name tags on every trash can. No, on every trash bag that I hand in. It's also not a bad idea. I'm trashing Angel Renee, yeah, by the way. I have a party and <laughs> pay one guest to say, can I have an orange? Then you can say, oh, we never have oranges. Mm, that's, that's, nah, it's too complex. But I like your thinking. That one was probably a better move. No follow up. It was probably them. But I'm hoping for a quick checkmate here. Boom. Quick checkmate. Do the fans saying you should shift from defense to active aggression? How would that look? Should I also become a trash detective? go through everybody else's trash because I'm a bit worried this is where this might lead to then maybe I can find some creepy items maybe someone's using I don't know Botox Viagra and then I can say you know this Viagra was in, in the wrong trash cap and I think that leaves only you, very old, but possibly still sexually active people as suspects. I can just go to the neighbors, talk to them in private. You know, I found, I found Viagra in the wrong trash. I don't want to make a big deal out of it. But I know it was you, Fredo. And then hear how they react. Live stream your trash cans 24-7 is also not a bad idea at all. Or just have a camera there. Hidden camera, ideally. Doesn't have to be live streamed. I just review the footage on a daily basis. And if I see someone throwing something that looks suspect into the wrong container, I either go there and confront them directly or I use the footage and play it at the next. We have these weird meetings once in a while. The next barbe neighbor's barbecue. Maybe the fact that I refer to neighbor's barbecues as weird meetings explains my standing in this community. Oof. I don't know a way out, chat. I think we have to move. But it would be, it would be a tremendous reality show. People always think that their lives would be tremendous reality shows. And then they wouldn't be.
Can I do this? Is this all theory? SCC chess? I didn't look at the Carol count since the early 60s. Queen f4, are you going to check maybe somehow? Where do I go here? Here? Where do I go? I feel like I should go here maybe. Queen c7, long castles, queen e5. Is that going to end well for me? Queen f5 looks fine, no? Mm. Oh, castles anyway. Do you have threats, sir? Should I three? G7 is any. Rook C8 feels a bit brazen. So 95, ED, E6, or whatever, but. G6, I could have done, yeah. I could just go John Wick because they violated my privacy. Sounds extreme. Well, I do find the, the trash detecting and especially the, the message with the trash back left in our parking spot. Extremely creepy. I do not think whoever it was has deserved any John Wick-like activities yet. I should say there has to be a yet in there because I'm not sure where the situation will go. But currently, that does feel like an overreaction. How do I win here? Check, check. Now let's keep the show. Sorry, guys, we have to look at the chessboard for a second. I understand it's not that kind of show. And the feedback I usually get when I do chess commentary or really anything in the Chess 24 world is, Jan, please stop talking about chess. We're not here for the chess on Chess 24. Please tell us more about your, uh, about your evil neighbors. Tell us more of your very exciting life. Please stop talking about the chess. That's what I always hear instantly, especially when you're doing commentary on a chess tournament. People always say, no, Jan, please don't let the amazing Peter Swidler analyze this position for us. Tell us more about what's on your mind. Have you seen any, any German reality TV recently? Why don't you share that with us? So I'm just, I'm just trying to please. Thanks for the game, SCC Chess. Mm. OCC Chess Club. Here we go. Let's play another Queen's Gambit, like Beth Harmon. Did she ever play Queen's Gambit? She always played E4, no? Ras, I was saying, I hope Jan has not seen any reality TV. Of course not. I would never. It poisons your mind. Like, why would you watch this? To, to look at the suffering of these poor people and thereby feel better about your own mediocre life? I would never. What's this position? What do you do to get out of chess slums? Retire. That's what I did. I just stopped playing. Against Borgov. Yeah, last game. Yeah, that, that is true. Speaking of Borgov, this game. Bit of a bore so far. And also the scene where Borgov applauds 
I'm not going to say which scene because I don't want to spoil the show for you. Queen's Gambit, great show. It's on Netflix. You should watch it. It's about chess and other things. Um, but the scene where Borgov applauds bothered me greatly. It might be based on something Spassky did. I do not know. But it did bother me. And it felt in that context. It felt wrong. What's with all the applauding? It's another weird German thing to do. Instead of doing anything real, we, we applaud and express our support. <clears throat> Borgoff. All right, here we go. Let's take a pawn. OCC Chess Club. Give me that. Why am I in time travel so quickly all the time? Maybe because of my slow play and the fact that these are three minute games. Could that be it? I doubt it. Can I take? Oh no, it's covered by this night. That's good to know. Hmm. Still want to take somehow. I'll take. I really want to. Don't ask me why. I don't think it makes any sense. But I really wanted to take it. Don't ask me why. Because I don't know. I'm not sure if we've debated this topic. If we haven't, it is another topic that I would like advice on. So what happened is I've seen the new Batman movie, which I thought was excellent, by the way, but this is not what this is about. So I've seen the new Batman movie called The Batman. and. Ever since, it is absolutely impossible to get the Nirvana song, something in the way, out of my head. In German, we call the situation an Ohrwurm, an earworm. In English, there is no similar term. We've had this debate before, and you guys will name all kinds of terms, but you will, you'll be wrong. There is no word that exists to describe the situation, which is a pity, and the English language should do better. However, my question is, is there any way to get something in the way out of my head, like ever again? Because I do not see it. Um, it's okay to eat fish, because they don't have any feelings. It's just an endless loop in my head. And it doesn't, it doesn't even rhyme or anything. It's just there. Thanks for the game, sir. Let's play Earl Heinz. It's been there for a while. It, it never goes. It's not the first time this phenomenon has happened to me. But this is a particularly um, resilient one. Earl Heinz, all booked up in whatever this is. Actually, seven was wrong. Actually, seven was weird. I should have gone might see six or some act. But here we are. Earl coming out, guns blazing. Let's 
slow down, sir. Also, I do like the song, so I don't want to replace it with I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. Life in plastic. It's fantastic. That would not increase my life quality. Animals are trash. Will become my pets. However, it does get it does get old after a while. Mm, how do I win here? I would like to win somehow. If you don't mind, sir. Let's just take, see if he checkmates me. That's always fun. I am aware that you will now also have this song stuck in your head. And it's also partly because why I, I brought this up. Because I do not want to suffer from the something in the way disease all by myself. I would guess. I ain't. I also have a feeling I might be getting checkmated here, which isn't really what I want. Rook G1, is that a mouse slip? Did you mean to go here? It's not a mouse slip. It's a strange decision to me. Six check is legal. I would take. He takes. And then we do something. But it doesn't feel like I'm getting mated there all that quickly. Betty HS is saying, isn't it annoying that you prepare Marshall for the best guy in the world, but in your games, it's a draw machine for the Bundesliga 23 hundreds. I was completely winning in that game, though, against the 23 hundreds. That's just me being being bad at chess it has nothing to do with the poor marshal. Mm. Wow, a lot of weird questions. Yaska man is saying, do you like shave every part of your body? What is going on with you? Chat. Um, hang on, I can take the queen. Will I get checkmated here? I could just take on H1, be, be a cynic. I'd like this check too. Just, you know, to see what Earl Heinz does. Earl Heinz resigns. Hmm. Let's play more, more games. Ross Press de Sousa. Okay. This game, nothing but chess commentary. Chad, you're scaring me. We shall focus on the chess. Just asking if I have my, if I have my own Twitch. Only, only in the, the beautiful language that is German. I have my fantastic Twitch channel. And um, Elias saying, like the stream, Jan, bye. Because of the chess content? Oh, I forgot about the chess content. So this 
This is a chess game. We're playing against Jos Press de Sousa. I am playing the Italian, ignoring whatever opening he feels like playing. Looks like he's playing the Sicilian dragon. I'm playing the Italian. We shall see whose strategy will prevail. I'm being half tongue in cheek, but the good thing about these Italian like setups is you can play them against a ton of openings. Wait, Bishop e6? That looks weird. I could take, or I could ignore it, just go bishop c2. Takes knight g5, queen d7. I don't know. I was going to play the Italian no matter what he does. So we'll do that. Yeah. Now I'm threatening a so called, what's it called? Is that a fork? He stopped it. Can I go here? Knight takes e4. If not, my opening strategy has backfired. Knight b4, good move. Should be 394. Seems to work. Takes, takes. Do I have queen e1? Okay, that's fine. We need more arrows. Hang on. Do you see my arrows? Maybe you saw my 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 brilliant arrow calculation. So what is this position? An exchange down. The horsey is far away from home. I guess I should get some pieces out first. My three might be a thing, but he has B4. G8. Let's keep attacking. Time to lock up. Lock up the night. Ah, you guys can't see my arrows? Ah, because it's being grabbed from. Ah, okay, that's unfortunate, actually. Ah, that's a problem with this, the way we're doing these banter blitzes now, no? Because like, I'm just in some, some Zoom call and my board is being grabbed directly. But that means you can't see the arrows I'm drawing, which is really 90% of the fun. Now that I know this, I'm going to have to switch to, to verbal explanations. That's, that's a great pity, because I thought, I mean, like, I kind of mean this. I thought I could get away with all my nonsense talking because of my expert um, arrow annotations giving all my deep chess thoughts. Now that I know that you don't have any arrows, I'm going to have to rethink everything we've done leading up to here. Possibly apologize. And then talk about the Pam and Tommy show that I watched recently. Twenty six seconds. <laughs> they also look to you like that pawn just moved diagonally to B three. Did look look strange to me. Excellent question. If the arrow is even drawn, if I only draw it for myself and no one saw it. Arrows were made. 
It's also a great pity for you guys because I'm an excellent Aerosmith. Like they call me the Steven Tyler of drawing arrows and drawing chess games. Thanks for the game. Just press the Sousa. Mm -hmm. Let's play more chess games. Fred Nurk is asking, how can you challenge Jan? You need to be a Chess24 premium member, Fred Nurk. You can become one with the voucher code Charity Cup that saves you 40%. Gives you access to all the banter blitzes. You can challenge them. Also gives you access to our fantastic new video series that we did with Laurent Fressinet and Peter Heinz on the 2021 World Championship match. Hang on, I did something wrong. I'm an idiot. Um, I should not look in the pool for opponents. I should accept challenges. <clears throat> so what was I talking about? Oh yeah, great video series. Now Chess24 is releasing them bits by bits. We did it from, from Laurent's home in Paris, which was fun. I'm not sure this story is leading anywhere. But it was interesting to see that Laurent, he's living, he's living a, real, a real life, you know, with a place where he lives, he, he eats, he does things. Because if you only know someone from either training camps or like doing commentary via a Zoom screen, it does feel very, very confusing to see them in their natural habitat. There was no, no pain blanc in his building. In his building, actually. Checked everywhere. Mm. On a serious note, I hadn't been to Paris very much. I'm a big fan of Paris now. It's so, what's the term? A life. There's stuff happening everywhere. I do love this culture of yeah, having a Little cafe pretty much on every block, no matter what time of the day. There are things. And yeah, I enjoyed the city. Obviously, we were there for work and only for whatever, three days or something. But we did go for, for walks. It's beautiful. I wasn't, I wasn't aware of that. Paris fan now. I think I'm aware. It's, it's a well-known place. But I thought I had, at least, maybe it's all in my head, but... Sometimes I you hear these things like yeah Paris is is I don't know too too messy too dirty going downhill. I did not feel like that at all. I thought it was beautiful. I thought this new policy. Not an expert on Paris local politics. This will surprise you. Of yeah, having tempo thirty everywhere for for the cars and trying to make the city. Yeah, as car free as possible, reclaiming spaces for um yeah, restaurants, cafes, bikes, and so on. Felt like it made life quality go go up a lot, and I, I enjoyed it there. That's that's my my hot Paris take. Nice place. Mm, what was I? Ah, yeah, I was talking about the the video series. Go watch it. We had fun. We are talking about 
the preparation for the 2021 World Championship match, the training camp, obviously about why Thailand was the only viable option for the seconds to go to my great regret. We tried everywhere else in the world, but unfortunately only Thailand worked out. That was that was a tough nut to swallow, but you live with it. We obviously explained why we couldn't be on site in Dubai if it has to do with the personalities of certain um, members of the team or not. And then we went, yeah, through the process, what was prepared, when, what we did in the training camps, all that stuff, the strategy for the match, and then every match game, what, what went well, what went wrong, what we had prepared, what we missed, where we think we did well, where we think we messed up, why Peter Heine spent a lot of time in Dubai parking lots. It's all there. So go watch it. I think it's a good series, also production-wise. <clears throat> Obviously, I'm not particularly neutral on it, but usually, I don't know if you guys know me, I'm not to the big, what's the word? Sadness of Chess 24 suits. I'm not excellent at plugging stuff, in particular, my own stuff. So I do think this is a good series and we enjoyed doing it. We had a guy, we did a bit differently, not just the usual chess board. Anyway, watch it. <laughs> Thanks for the game. Oops, kitty, I won, right? I won on time. Yay. Was this Feeder Master? Yumamba. 2864? That's a very high rating. Sir or man. Why am I only 2590? I used to be like 3000 in the old play zone. And now it's all gone. As is Yumamba. Wow, chat. Some classy humor with the tough nut to swallow in Thailand. Subtle. Subtle. Uncle Ben has been trying to challenge, but this new form is confusing. Do we have the link? There's a link where you can challenge me, no? Can we spam that? on Twitch. How many challenges are there? I currently have 17 open challenges. Now it just clicked on one of them. Why must I lose to this bogus? That's screaming for. What's this called? The Mora? The Smith Mora? Doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? You're giving a pawn for like half a tempo? It's not an obvious opening choice. I do know the plan though. We put the rook here and then we hope for stuff. Okay, I don't know what that stuff could be. E5, D5, no progress there, no? Yeah, I'll just play A3, B4, see what happens. This looks like a good setup that he's playing. Bokes, have you studied this? Do you study this Smith Mora? I would have studied the Smith Mora if I was a Sicilian player. Actually, I probably did study it, but usually I'm lazy and after D4, C, D, C3, I just play Knight of Six, transposing to the C3 Sicilian, which is a bit of a, of a meek 
thing to do. Because it is a free pawn. Why not take it? Not clear to me what should go where here. I don't think I have anything for the pawn wheel. I'm regretting. Regretting some of my choices. Also, I'm not happy with how I played this game. Axel Zug is saying, do you know what is Laurent's chessboard? I like it a lot. We have Backvac every corner. What are we talking about? He had some fancy chessboard. No, I can't recall what it is, but it was fancy. That I do remember. Can I do something fancy here, like ever? I struggle to find any, what's the, the term? Good moves. Really don't see what to do. Knight d4, isn't it? Oof. I have a long way to go on my road to Smith Mora mastery. So far, all it got us is being a pawn down with a pretty bad position because it's a3, b4 I did earlier. Really does not mix with playing on the king side because now I have these weaknesses too. A tremendously popular opening in British chess circles. I'm aware. I'm not sure why because it really does give a pawn for not a whole lot, but it does have a fascination that is seems very hard to shake. I did read Mark Esselman's book. Um, he made a compelling case. It's more fun as with all these openings if you don't switch on your computer. But I do have a soft spot for the Mora. Although, yeah, it does. It really doesn't feel logical because we're giving up a pawn for like one tempo. I was told you need three. Anyway, here we are. Queen takes, knight f4, queen d6, is that? Now there's forks. There's forks. We don't want any forks. Don't fork this up, yeah. Trying not to lose by fork. Should e8, whatever. I need to do something. About that night. The hope thin is saying, I assume Laurent has an apartment in the Eiffel Tower. He has the penthouse, the Eiffel Tower penthouse. It was built on top of the Eiffel Tower. It's a beautiful place. None of my moves make any sense, but okay. You've been watching this for an hour. You're no longer surprised by that. Rook d6, I did not like. Hmm. Okay, time. Time for the comeback. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, let's wait a bit with the comeback. Ooh, why am I allowing the queen to go here? Is that wise? Why am I so bad at chess? That is the real question. Um, all right, end game. End game pawn down. <laughs> Smith Mora.
begging for the NKM. C3. Yep. No longer pawn down. That's the good news. Mm hmm. Folks, don't mess this up. You played such a good game. Don't mess this up now. The bishop. How do I win actually? Can't checkmate. King c5, knight e8, king c5, e3, knight d2. It's a pretty quick plan. H2. Brazen. He's going after all my pawns. I'm going after the king, though. Checkmate. The Smith Mora. Uncle Ben is saying it was much easier to challenge before Twitch. What does Twitch have anything to, to do with it? You can't challenge on Twitch. I'll post the link just for you. The usual story, need to be a premium member, can get 40% off. With the le, le voucher code, all the good stuff. Let's play Batman. Batman 2017. Uncle Ben saying, still it was tricky. It is rough clicking on things. <sighs> Batman. Three minute game. Okay, let's pin him. I'm pinning my hopes on this pin. I have three feels slightly off somehow. But it usually transposes to the usual stuff. Good old Karpov system. What am I supposed to do here? I bd7, is this some draw? I want some draw. Knight c6 was this, this is some weird exchange sacrifice, no? Should have six, queen f6, knight d7, queen h4. Does ring a bell. Probably not very good, but we gotta keep the game going. d5, can you do that? I 
I'm not sure if I had a better move than this. He looks surprised by queen c4. Maybe I could have punished that harder, like bishop d6. Anyway, here we are. We have an exchange down. We do have a pawn for it and the two bishops, so it's not a drastic material advantage. I could take another pawn on c3. I'm always torn about such decisions. This is a good idea or a bad idea. I would assume someone with bigger chess understanding than me would know the answer instantly. I don't want to take care of those are rook c1. It feels, feels strange. What do I want to do though? I would need my rook on d8, ideally. Should make a move of some description. Maybe this to claim some squares. Go queen b6 check, because rook c1 is coming. I don't really want to exchange rooks. So this whole operation, starting to doubt already. However, two bishops and a pawn is really not a significant material disadvantage. So I shouldn't be too worried here, I would guess. But exchanging the pair of rooks is not ideally what you should do. So. It's what I did too. So I'm not sure where the story is taking us. <clears throat> B3 is up. Takes away the square from his own knight. Batman. D4, FE would be four EF. That's right. Seems to work, no? Ah, oh, this queen e6 is cute. Could have thought of this earlier, but I'm winning with f2. That's good news. Uh, what am I doing? I, uh, I'm going insane. I don't know what, somehow, yeah. My mind told me that square is covered. Good job, Jan. <sighs> Going nuts. Now I'm lost. Congratulations. Good job by you. Oof. Hmm. I am I am losing my mind. So originally I missed Queen E6, which is not ideal already. But I thought I was winning here. Takes, takes. 
EF and after rook H4, FE, the pawn is actually queening. Then to my horror, I spotted queen E6. Maybe I should have thought here for a second. And then somehow my brain told me, no, don't worry, Jan. You're no longer covering E4, but you're covering F4, so you can play F2. So F takes E2, which is not a legal move. Not the case. Like clearly things have gone, oh, brain. Did you think about this? No, brain isn't that smart. Was it G5, rook H5, F2? Sorry, I'm going insane. But yeah, should have played G5. Not sure if it's winning. G5, rook H2, F2. Rook H5, F2, I'm winning, right? So pawn here, rook takes, f2, rook takes, king f7, and then the square is actually covered. And g5, if rook e4, f2, I'm also winning. So the move would be rook d4 to meet f2 with rook d1. After which it looks like I'm not winning, right? So the rook comes here. And I'm not in time. Still, G5, I should have played. Ah, you guys can't see my... I keep forgetting that you guys can't see my board. Sorry. I'm talking about this great game. Instead of F2, I should have played G5. Sorry, I'm so used to... Um, yeah, my screen being grabbed, not, not just the board. Um, I don't think... I don't think there's a way around because the way the show is done is we're just grabbing, we're just following my games. Sorry, so that's we should fix that. Let's let me show my arrows and my board for the next Manta Blitz. Like this, yeah. We need people to see the arrows and the notes. No? Anyway, let me play play another game and then we call it a night. Good game, Batman. Suki Ray is saying, are you going to stream more in English? Never. The German language. <clears throat> That's where it's at, I was told. Win three. Are you there? Texas Cowboy is saying, I thought you only stream in French. It's a popular misconception. I'll be doing more commentary in English though. Mr. Chess24 told me. Do more, do more commentary in, in the English language. So we're doing what are we doing? The next Grand Prix, once this Champions Chess tour is over, we're doing the Grand Prix final. Norway Chess is up there. Norway Chess is coming up. There's stuff coming up. Win three. It's not here. So we find somebody else. What about Monty? F. Irani is saying, I miss you in Charity Cup commentary. Appreciate it. Um, I'm sure there are two great shows, though. As long as you tell me, it's fine. Normally, I get triggered when I do English commentary, rarely. And obviously, people have their, everyone has their own favorite commentator. But it's very upsetting if you're doing the show there and trying to do whatever, do a good show. Sometimes I try. Believe it or not. And then there is a constant barrage of where's Leiko? I miss Tanya. I wish we had Syravan. Um, where's Swidler? 
I miss Lawrence. Okay, that has never happened. But you, you get, you get my point. So it always makes me somewhat sad that it's it often leads to insta complaints whenever someone is not there. And okay, I mainly did this for the Lawrence joke. I do miss Lawrence, but the point is just. Where is Lawrence? Musio is saying nobody knows dad's jokes except for you, Jan. You don't even know how to spell dad jokes. So don't tell me about dad jokes, Musio. Lauren's working on GM norms. That's where we want him to be. Can you take this poem? I doubt it. I'm not sure where Lawrence is. I'm assuming he's living the life in Berlin. You want to learn German, but gave up at the German World for Hospital? It's Krankenhaus. Duda fan saying, when I commentate, I always write, where's Jan? I miss Jan. Yeah, don't do that, especially if people are reading the chat. It's, it's a real downer for the commentators, as much as I appreciate it in that case. But it's really, it's really, really tough to read when you're, yeah. When you put yourself into the shoes of whoever's commentating and you're sitting there trying to do well and you read, where's that guy or where's, where's that girl or where's whoever. So ideally, don't do it in those shows. Do that fan saying he's joking. Oh, where, where, where's my rook? Those are my questions. What happened to my rook? Poor rook. Could have used that rook for all kinds of things, I feel like. Now it's gone. Don't take my other rook, sir or ma'am. Monty. He went full Monty on that rook. I do appreciate you returning that rook that you took from me earlier. So it was a rook that was precious to me. The rook I was proud to call a friend. I had big plans with that rook. Then it just disappeared. Should not get myself checkmated here. Ideally. Monty, time is running out. That is checkmate. 
Thanks for the game. Monty. That was it for today's banter blitz. This was fun. We should do this more often. Should we? And still, I did enjoy it. Thanks for sticking around if you watch this after the charity cup. And I genuinely feel we need we need arrows. Chest 24. Let's let's do something about them arrows. Um thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of the charity cup. Go premium to watch our very fun new video series about the 2021 World Championship match between Magnus Carlsen and Jan Nepomnesi, where Laurent Frassinet, Peter Nielsen, and I give you a behind-the-scenes look because we were all on Magnus Carlsen's team. So you get some insights there on the match. And of course, you can challenge in the next pantoplets. What's not to like? Thanks for watching. Have a good night. Remember to always take out your garbage and put it in the right trash can. If I learned one lesson these days, this is it. Bye. Hi, everybody, and welcome to our new video series. My name is Jan Gustafsson, and I'm thrilled to be reunited with fellow Magnus Carlsen's trainers, seconds, Peter Heine Nielsen, Magnus Carlsen's head coach, and Laurent Fressinet, Magnus Carlsen's French coach, are both here. And we will be going through the World Championship match 2021. Our experiences with it, the games, what we prepared, where we felt things went well, where we felt things didn't go well. Peter, we have different perspectives because we were in different locations. Very much. I'm looking forward to talking to you guys about it because you were in Thailand during all the match and I was in Dubai with the Magnus and the Geologist, his non-chess team. So I see some kind of debriefing where we will discuss what was the mood in Dubai, what was happening in the technical department in Thailand. And we got to sort of basically compare notes and uh, yeah, get the two kind of inside looks uh, from the match. Very much so. And Laurent, we are actually in your private home. Thanks for having us. It's a big pleasure to, to welcome both of you. And I'm sure it will be interesting to talk to you guys about the match. Likewise. So we hope you guys enjoy the series with our behind the scenes insights. <laughs> See you then. <laughs>